Hello and welcome to Tour Tall Sisters, a book club podcast about the works by Tamara Pierce. I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And that's the intro. That's what we and give you. totally, totally the first time we did that, and there were no problems at all. And I think it was definitely worth not recording it, not re-recording it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hooey. We go, like, so, how long without doing this? And, and this is what happens. <laughs> yeah. It's been, like, four months. That's fine. That's, That's fine. fine. We got it. So, <laughs> what are we reading? What did we read this quarter, sister? Uh, yes, this quarter. Uh, <laughs> this financial quarter, we read um, Cold Fire, the third book of the uh, Circle Opens Quartet. Indeed. Cold fire. So you might be asking, hey guys, what the fuck? So here's the thing. As you guys are going to hear, if you didn't read Cold Fire and you're just listening to this because you're like, ah, I like to hear what they do. Um, <laughs> well, this book is intense and I am going to start off with a couple of trigger warnings. Just some content warnings for you guys. Um, there's fire, obviously, but set fires, if that's an issue for you. Uh, people burn to death. Um, there is a child death, and there specifically infant death. Sorry, guys. Just going to put that out there. Um, there is an abusive mother, and what else? What am I missing? Predatory behavior. Oh, yeah. Incredibly I predatory mean... behavior. Um, it's just really fucked up. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's who. But it is an amazing book, it, and I honestly yeah. have to say it is my favorite book by Tamara Pierce. Yeah, I it love is. it. No notes. It is impeccably written. Mm. Um, so we're going to really bastardize this when telling it to you because <laughs> we um, we got we overwhelmed. Were having, we were having way too much trouble trying to um, write it all out. So we have now literally made it into like check boxes for us to talk about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's like four or five per chapter. So you know what? Let's get started. Let's do it. Do you want to start or do I want to start? Um, I'll start. Okay. Why not? We can do this together. In a morn. Why are they here? What is here? <laughs> important questions to ask. Very important questions. So uh, Daja and her teacher, Frostpine, are up in Namorn or the Namornese Empire, which is um, where, you know, the, the place where Sandry is related yeah. to the Empress. So s s technically, Sandry is landed gentry. Um, in this in this country, mm -hmm. cool for her. Yeah, um, but they're there uh, because they're going off on a little adventure, like all the other kids in the circle. Um, <laughs> Basically, to... Frostpine was like, "I know all your siblings went off to summer camp, so let's go. Let's go do our own version of it." <laughs> so they they went to study. They've been on a little excursion to study all of the new different types of of forging. Yes. Yep, metalwork. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. They're seeking to broaden their horizons in, in the coldest the fucking place to be at that very moment, really. Yeah, it, they literally went up far, far north in late autumn. Um, so they are currently staying with um, <laughs> Frostpine's ex-girlfriend and ex-roommate. Yes. Who are now married and have many children together. They do. Two of which are the twins, Gerality and well, Niamara. Niamara. And yeah. they are um, teaching Daja how to skate. Because guess what? This is a place where it's basically a bunch of islands with canals in between them that freeze over in the winter. And in the winter, everyone just skates everywhere. But Daja, being <laughs> a good trader girl, um, lived on the sea for most of her life and rarely had anything to do with cold weather like this. So <laughs> she... And the frost pine also lived in a very hot climate and does not do well in the cold. He does um, not. <laughs> so uh, these two twins are trying to teach, uh, they're 11 or 12, I don't remember. They're trying to teach Daja how to skate and she's not doing well. And then suddenly there's a fire and a fire brigade. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much like every single chapter there's a fire almost. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there's a fire and Daja's like, oh no, the whole place is made of wood. It's going to all just go up in flames. But ha ha. It doesn't because they have a trained fire brigade. And apparently someone has been training all of these people to do like proper fire lines and they are able to put out the fire and everything's fine. And we meet Bennett fucking Ladridon. Bennett fucking um, Ladridon is his full name. Please use it. 
everyone. Yeah, we <laughs> literally almost every single time we talk about him, he is Ben fucking Labradun. Um, this man who I, for some reason, have always pictured as looking like Mr. Incredible. I can I can see that. But like in his brow beaten years mm-hmm. um, at, at his insurance job. So that's how I know this I isn't context him. for you, but for everyone else, I always kind of pictured him a little bit like a, a cleaned up Tormund Giantsbane, um, who wasn't a wildling. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes lots of sense. Um, but he's there and he's confident and he's the person in charge of all the fire brigades and he's he's helping to put out the fire and, and he's just an amazing hero. Um because of course he is. Back inside, um, in the kitchen, uh, Gerality is helping uh, cook because, you know, she's a good a good girl who needs to be learning how to be a good wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, Daja watches her literally use magic to fix a sauce that turned lumpy. And <laughs> Daja goes, wow, Jory, that's like, how'd you do that? You could like sell that. People would love it. And she's like, I don't have magic. <laughs> Daja's like, oh no, not this. Um <laughs> And then, um, Ariana, what does Call Me Ben mean? Um, oh, that was, um, Ben introducing himself to, uh, he's, he's just talking to her about it, what he does and how he trained with, um, God's Forge. Maybe he doesn't say it there, but he, he's like, he's like, <laughs> oh, and please, call me Ben. And yeah, it's just like, really Ew, weird. no, mm-mm, yeah, mm-mm. this man in his 30s being really weird weird with this 14 year old girl and she Um, sees him and she's like this is a true hero and then he wanders off home saying he doesn't want to make mother mad despite being a grown-ass man oh i gotta go home i don't want to make mother mad Mm -hmm. sir woof mcguff um chapter two i hope you guys didn't want to hear a coherent synopsis (laughs) because it's not happening i feel like i feel this is fairly coherent chapter two uh Daja returns to the Bankanor house to be uh, to find um, Frostpine defrosting um, in one of the less distressing ways. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to those. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, since this is the first scene they've had together, it's, it's time for some father-daughter, uh, you know, catch-up. So we find out that Frostpine is looking into a coin forgery case, a very convincing forgery that can trick even Daja into thinking that it's it's a a, a gold uh, something. Yeah. No, no, Ivory? it's the silver. The silver. They go after the silver. Is it? I don't care. Anyway. It, it's something. <clears throat> but anyway, so he's spending this whole time um, off screen somewhere. Um, uh, fucking just, I love how absent the teachers are. Yeah. While also, like, still being a support structure. Anyway. Yeah, um, actually, Frostpine is more in this than, like, any of the other yeah. teachers have been, are mm-hmm. at all. Um, I guess Lark is pretty involved I think, still. Isn't but Nico more involved in Triss's, though? I thought though? he also had something to, like, he's doing something really special that he doesn't... Yeah, but I feel like so it's, it ends up... It's not like Rosethorn, where Rosethorn's just absent the entire book because of what she's doing. Which, like, good for her. Right. Get some space. Stay busy, woman. Um, but I feel like that's just, like, part of this is, like, these books are, like, coming of age. And, like, we don't need our teachers yeah. anymore. We would just would like them. Become the teacher. Um, <laughs> namaste and all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so he's off solving crimes, uh, working with a special um, a special mage unit uh, led yeah, by Haluda Salt. magistrate's Salt. mage. Yes, magistrate mage. Um our girl Haluda. So then Daja tells tells Frostpine, "Hey, guess what I saw Jory do," and he's like, "Oh, so you think they've both got magic, right? Because if a twin, one twin has it, the other one does. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Thom and <laughs> Alana both had magic. Anyway, um, yeah. yes, I'm still calling him Thom. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I know you it's wrong. Commenters. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's wrong." <laughs> So anyway, uh, so he gives her the spiel, the whole, you know, this is the third one. We know, we understand by now. Hey, you're the one who discovered them. You have to teach them. Hey, but don't worry. At least it'll be a little easier because like cook mage, but uh, is is easy to come by so that they'll have no problem finding uh, someone to teach her. And they just have to figure out what Nia's uh, power is. So Frostpine is like, well, well, how, how are we going to... Um, 
figure out her power you know what what, what are you gonna do she's gonna have to scry but dodge has always had trouble scrying with other things that uh nico tried to teach them with like water and 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 mirrors and things like that and so she realizes hey i know what i can do because i'm dodge at the overachiever and i'm just brilliant and delightful um i'm going to make my own uh a silver mirror so that it's metal, and therefore I have control. <laughs> also, doesn't she use some of her uh, living metal? She does on use it? some of her living yeah. metal. Uh, she keeps her living metal with her in like a jar. She just <laughs> constantly peels, and it's just like, ew. I feel that. <laughs> it's like magical psoriasis. Yeah. <laughs> So clearly she makes one. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then she comes down later, and uh, we get to meet the the power thruple, in my opinion, um, which is <laughs> Matazi and um, Cole Bankanor, who uh, were, as Risa said, uh, the girlfriend and uh, roommate, uh, respectively, of Frostpine. I personally feel they were a thruple, and he took himself out of the equation because he was like, nah, you know what? You guys are really good together. Um <laughs> Which, canonically, he did go, you know what, I'm sorry, uh, Cole will give you a better life than I ever could, so you should go be with him. <laughs> yeah. And he was right. So then, um, after the adults uh, talk and, and make Daja eat, they, uh, Daja's <laughs> like, hey, guess what? I love Matazi. She is always like, eat, drink, eat, drink, do something, consume. Um, and I, I, I love that in a woman. Um and so she finally goes, hey, guess what? <laughs> Your kids are magic. And um, so they use the mirror to summon up images. So to test it, you know, Daja pre- presents um, her own vision of fire magic and, and metal and all that stuff. And then gives it to uh, Nia because she knows that uh, Nia being the, the quieter twin would probably want to you know just try to sneak out not not get uh <laughs> not get diagnosed with uh, magic but um I, I diagnose you with the magic <laughs> exactly um so we find out that nia's power is in wood wood carp a carpentry magic um and as we know confirmation jory's is in kitchen magic uh and so instantly the the parents are like okay well because this is this is sort of a a, a a cue into what this area is like um they immediately have to be like okay so how are we going to marry them off then like what what are some good alliances that we could make um but yeah (laughs) and they're just like no one's gonna want a a carpentry witch oh hey it's okay all of the you know a shipbuilding family would love would kill to have a carpentry (laughs) mage as a as a wife (gasps) really you really think they would as much as I, I like inherently don't like the idea, I do love how like uh, they are how, how clever to they idea. are. And, oh well, that yeah. too. Yeah, and they, they definitely they say that, that largely. Been... Be- yeah, yeah, they say it largely because they know she's been uh, crushing on one of the sons of the shipbuilder family. Yeah, but yeah, the and the, so Dodge is like, "Yep, we're gonna have to find some teachers." End of chapter two. <laughs> chapter three. Daja goes out to meet the... So, first, Matazi hands her a list of, these are all of the people we think would be good teachers. So Daja goes out to ask them, hey, are you guys actually taking students right now? Um, Her first... So she goes out, chauffeured by the delightful Serge. (laughs) I called him Serge. Is it Serge? I think it's supposed to be Serge, because there's just... It's just a G. Ah, yes. So the delightful (laughs) Serge. Because Daja still can't skate, so they make her go with the sleigh driver and she feels slightly humiliated by this, but it's fine. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. Um, so they go out, she meets, uh, the first teacher she meets is a carpentry mage named Kamek Oakborn. And she's like, I don't know if I like this guy. He's really gruff, but at least he agrees that I'm a mage. <laughs> so there's that. Um, he, you know, he tests out her, her medallion, but then he's like, yeah, okay. And he immediately like carries on treating her like an equal, which you love to see it. Yeah. Um, which is not always true. Yeah. So on their way home, after meeting a couple other teachers, I think, um, they see another fire, of course. So Daja goes, wow, fire, gotta go. <laughs> so they go to the fire and, you know, once again, Ben fucking Ladderdun is there. Mm. Um, you know, 
And they look up and it's like, oh, we got the fire. Mostly everyone's out. But then they look up or no one's home or something like that. And then they look up and there's this girl waving out the window. And they're like, oh, no, it's the blind girl. (laughs) We didn't know she was home. It's the blind girl and her birds. And her birds. So Daja, you know, goes in the building um, and... Because, you know, they just let 14-year-olds run into burning buildings because, I mean, to be fair, they know she's magic. Yeah. And she's like, excuse me, I won't burn to death here. I'll go. Um, and so Ben fucking Ladderden mm-hmm. take gives her at least a wet blanket to go in to help save the girl. She goes all the way up to get the girl. And the girl comes, my birds. And Dasha's like, we have to go. And the girl's like, okay. And Dasha's like, no, <laughs> I have to save the birds now too. Um, because she's like, if she had just... If she had, like, been trying to fight me on it, I might have gone. But she was just so, like, sadly accepting of this. I have to (laughs) save them. So she uses her powers to encapsulate the birds in, like, some air so that they don't suffocate on the way out. And I love that. I just love that bit. I I love that she she thinks about uh, Triss and her love of animals and how much it would hurt any of them if something happened to, like, Little Bear. Yeah. (sighs) It's so sad. But, um... As they're they're coming out and everything, um, you know, it's like, wow, she, you know, Daja saved everyone. And then she's immediately, all of her clothes turned to ash as she walks out and everyone like steps back from her. And she's like, man, not again. <laughs> um, and then later, um, after like they go home and stuff, um, we see things from Ben's perspective. I'm just going up and reading this bit to you guys yeah. that I actually wrote out. <laughs> um, and... <sighs> Uh, he started the fire to test the fire brigade, but he didn't know anyone had been inside. He thinks about how amazing it was to watch Daja command the fire. He calls her a goddess and that he loves her in a way. He loves her in a way. It's a deeply unsettling scene, and I love and hate Tammy for making me read it. And apparently I wrote down a specific page number. (laughs) So let's find out why. Let's find out why. She'd been glorious to watch. As much as it burned him to see her to go where he could not, it had been wonderful to see her in action. To watch the fire bend and reshape itself to her liking. <laughs> My god. Blech. Gross. You're gross, sir. It's true. Um, so yeah, we, we end the chapter on that. And wasn't it note. funny at his age to fall in a kind of love with a teenage girl? No! Barefoot in the mud, her clothes blackened and crumbling, her dark skin gleaming with sweat. Whatever she was, he would love her until they died. Uh, murder in my heart fucking hey man i don't i don't like it it's it's not funny that that you feel this way it's it's fucking upsetting you're upsetting ben chapter four uh more skating before a note from ben fucking ladradin uh calls daja to his uh home she, so she goes there and she's like oh i can use this as a chance to talk about um something that." I have been wanting to do because ever since she realized that Ben is this hero who goes into fires, even though he has no magic and he risks his life and he's got this like scar on him from touching fire. And she's like, I could make a fireproof suit for him. That way he'll go in and rescue people. Yes. He'll use it as a hero does. Yeah. Dasha is so blinded by his heroism that she just does not see what's in front of her. Um, and she's not the only she's one. She's so baby. She she's so baby. so baby. And it just, she is somehow so naive yeah. while also being born middle-aged. Yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, so, oh, by the way, Ben throws in another. Ben, remember, Ravit Ladradon is who I am to the people of my, at my business. I prefer to think about business as little as possible. <laughs> And then, um, so basically we get there and we see some, we, there's some weird things, like it's, it's really cold, um, and it's, uh, um, he, he's brought a tea that's, uh, not his tea, um, it's apparently, like, a, a probably, I presume reused tea leaves, uh, um, yeah. uh, because his mother is just a nasty penny-pinching, pinching piece of work. And so we, we do also meet Ravi Morricane Ladridan, um, who is an awful woman. She kind of is like Beatrix Horseman. Um, yes. You know how I see her? Hmm. 
I see her as Spike's mom. Yeah. Oh, fucking absolutely. Physi- physically, when, when Spike's mom yes. is, is turned into a vampire and she is all, yes. who could love you? That's, that's 100% exactly. who I see. <laughs> so yeah, she's yeah, just, No, that's exactly. She's this bitter old woman who um, has a very clear distaste for Daja, but to be fair, she has a distaste for pretty much everyone. We'll get to who she doesn't have a distaste for. Um... It just feels racist too. She feels racist. Like it definitely she feels that way. But then say anything she about it. Also does um oh because we didn't say this part but um in this this is a very white area of the world and um yes. uh, Matazi is darker skinned. I don't remember where they say she's from. I don't remember. Either. Um, but so the girls are also so they're basically Caption? half black. Caption. Yeah, that sounds right. Anyway. I don't remember. I know they at least talk about the place, but it doesn't They matter. do talk about Caption because someone makes tea mm-hmm. in the sensible way. Yeah. <laughs> D- oh, no, that's uh, Tarad's wife. Oh, that's right. The, the guy at the fort. It doesn't yeah. matter. Who cares? Anyway. None of it matters. The point is... <laughs> the Maura Kane is a fucking terrible person. She's a terrible person. She's awful to her son. She's aw- way... She's worse to everyone. Um, yeah. But... I guess I kind of spoiled it. She does have a soft spot for Nia and Jory, and we will talk about that. Um, anyway, after, you know, kind of a, a bristly interaction with uh, Maura Kane, uh, Daja returns to Bankinor House to find uh, Nia, already studying wood magic, and, 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 and being like, what can I possibly do? And my favorite is, is because Daja gives a whole bunch of suggestions about, you know, how, you know, you could enchant wood to do this and that. And my favorite is the anti-theft spelled chair. That's amazing. I love it so much. <laughs> anyway. Okay. What? Yeah. No, continue. No. Um, and then uh, we get our first hint at twin magic, which isn't like magic magic. It's, it's the twins being able to sense each other. Um, although Jory claims that it's something only Nia can do, which is a lie. But um, yes. <laughs> anyway, so that's just an introduction to it. Uh, so... Nia and Jory are uh, brought for meditation training because, you know, this is the first thing that they've got to do. They've got to start reigning in their powers. I know you guys know this because we've read so many books involving this now, but let's keep going. One more. Um, (laughs) And then one after it. it. (laughs) Um, So uh, the problem being, um, you know, Nia is getting it so quickly. She is almost she's almost gotten a, a, a good pull on it or on her first try. Um, but then there's Jory who has ADHD. Um, okay. What? Okay. Nia is autistic yes. and Jory has ADHD. Yes. And it's so clear to me yes. because Nia has like, she's already memorized all of these facts about wood. Mm-hmm. Wood is her fucking special interest already <laughs> before she even <laughs> knew about her powers. Yep. Which is great because Daja also is autistic. Yeah. So they really connect. Whereas Jory is like, she totally has ADHD. She cannot sit still. She yeah. has, she's just like, oh yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I have to say, I I love our 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 um, I love our so many neurodivergent uh characters in this goddamn <laughs> series. Like just yes, such a delight, such a delight. And I feel, I feel, I feel Jory quite a bit because yeah. I also have always had a hard time sitting and meditating. I, I've gotten, I got better oh, yeah. at it obviously, no. but I was always better at doing it either yeah. while doing yoga or, or dancing. Ballet for me. Mm-hmm. It was always ballet bar. That is how I, that's meditation for me. Yeah. So it's, it's fun to see that being um, the case. Cross stitch. <laughs> um, uh, but then, uh, yeah, basically <sighs> Jory, it ain't having any of it, and and Nia's frustrated by her twin, and Dodge is like, okay, we're done for the day, and um, goes down to find that Matazi and Cole are like, okay, we we we've uh, we're good with the the list that you you brought back to us, and um, you you go see those people and girls, you're gonna have to go. Dodge says you have to pick your teacher, it's a part of the mage thing, so you're gonna do it because I uh, I adore. Matazi and, and Cole, because they are so fucking reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> they are the most reasonable, well-adjusted people in this entire goddamn series. <laughs> it's true. I, That's not true. Lark. Yes. Otherwise, yes. But even then, I feel like Lark takes too much responsibility for things that aren't That's actually true. in her control, which That's I'm true. like, that's unreasonable. I'm done with this. Stop blaming yourself. 
because I become Rose Thorn apparently. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, mood. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thus ends chapter four. Uh, chapter five. Um, more skating, and Dodge is not happy about it. Um, <laughs> but I think this is the chapter where she starts being like, wait a second. Skating is kind of like meditation. I just have to clear my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, But then Daja and twins and Serg, of course, head out to go meet all of the teachers. And they start off with uh, Kamek Oakborn. And Mia's (laughs) like, yes, no, I belong here. And Daja's like, no, we need to go see other teachers. And she's like, no, no, this is where I belong. (laughs) She's like, like, your parents have said, you don't get to just go around choosing. You choose one. And that's who you have as your teacher. She's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. You're going to have your hands full with Jory today. So just leave me here. And I'm really happy about it. Um, and then when they go out to the sleigh, of course, Aunt Maura Kane is there. And she's being very kind to Jory. And is just being a complete see you next Tuesday <laughs> to uh, Daja. Refusing to use the mage title Viamese. Mm-hmm. Only using Raviki, which is like, you know, miss. It's like Senorita, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, excuse you, fucking Morricane fucking Latradun. It's the equivalent of just calling her girl. It's Pretty like. Much. It's like, it's wow. awful. Um, she's terrible. And that's when we find out that um, she used to just beat uh, people on the street. Mm hmm. Because Jory's like, yeah, I used to think that all of the stories about her were people just making it up. But then I saw her, like, wailing on a guy. Um, or wait, that might be Nia It later. is Nia, and it's later. And I only say that because it's, it, it was one that stuck out to me when I was looking through and <laughs> making my, my uh, speed notes. Oh, that was after the lace one, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Jory's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sorry. She's kind of awful, but she likes us. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then Jory's a little shit. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, as Ariana said, like, what a well-written, relatable as hell little shit kid with a heart of gold and a face of pure cuteness, I assume. Um, I assume they're fucking Because adorable. Jory is like, yeah, we'll go look at all of the, we'll go to all of the teachers. I don't like that one. I don't like that one. I don't know. I didn't like any of them. End of the day. And Daja is exhausted. I was like, I don't, we met everyone. You have to pick one. And she goes, well, you know, there's one we didn't meet because it we're on our list but um there's only like a pot cracker and it's like what are you talking about yeah so she used to be the personal chef of the empress until she fell into the river river sith which is like the big river that goes through to mourn that's frozen like most of the year yeah and then she like had a come to god moment um where she was like no i mean this you know the river sith itself came to her because it's a god um you know, and he came to her and said no you must do other things with your life and so she gave up being the personal chef to the empress and convinced the empress to give her a lot of money to start a bunch of hospital kitchens, which like good for her. Yeah. Um, and so she currently works in one of the hospital kitchens that all, and all of them also serve the poor. And, um, she, they're like, yeah, Jory's like, yeah. And we'll just have to go to it, which is in, um, you know, black fly bog, which is, you know, like the shitty part of town. And Sergis like, they're going to murder me for taking their daughter to <laughs> black fly bog. Um, <laughs> Because he is a... A good, good boy. He's a good boy who is also incredibly dramatic. Que dramatic. <laughs> and end of chapter five. Yeah. Um, although I do have to add on to that. Dasha's like, you were playing me. She's like, you yeah. knew who you knew you wanted this. You just knew that I wasn't going to let you do it unless you wore me down. You little piece of shit. And she's like, yeah. and she's like but I didn't, I didn't know. I, believe- I might have liked one of the other ones. I be- no, <laughs> you little shit. I believe that's one of the times that she, uh, there's some point in the book, I didn't note it, but when she looks at, at Jory and says, you know, you might be a good liar to some, but I grew up with the best liar, and you don't come close to Briar Moss. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like, she's like, what does that mean? It means stop lying to me. <laughs> yeah. So good. Um, chapter six. Viennese Olenica Potcracker is my hero, and I want to be her, and I'm also in love with her. Like, she's just a hurricane woman. I was going to say spitfire of a woman. <laughs> She's she's very she is organized chaos. She is bam, bam. She's she's got the she's got the personality of Mibs. Yes, which doesn't make sense to anyone Any of listening, you. but I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. She's she's very very uh brusque. She is very um 
uh, look, you're going to be here. Do something. And um, yeah. uh, Serg, being a good boy, uh, is like, okay, I'll lift heavy things for you, ma'am. Um, which is adorable. And yeah. she, <laughs> without even having to have said a word to Daja, sort of sizes up Jory and goes, you. Do you know what you're doing in the kitchen? Okay, I want you to go get me this much of this, this much of this, this, a very long list. And she's like, now go. I don't like repeating myself. And so that's basically her first test of her. And and uh, they they help stock the storeroom and then they sit down to food because this is just what's happening. You just kind of go with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if anyone else has ever been in this kind of situation, but yeah. You know, sometimes you're just, you have to allow yourself to be ingratiated in. You're like, okay, yep. I'm working with you and now I'm eating with you. Anyway, um, so uh, semi-reluctantly, um, Olenica agrees. She's like, okay, I'll give her a week. And if she doesn't, you know, if, she, if she's not um, up to up to the task, then she's not up to task. There's other people. Um, and <laughs> when she tells Jory, Jory is so happy. She just throws her arms around her and then gasps let's go and it's like okay i'm gonna go do something <laughs> so cute it's so cute it's so it's so briar and rose thorn and i love it um except she doesn't need a mommy so like it can just be a a, a little you know um yeah. anyway back at van Canor house uh we talk to the parents and try to meditate well some of us are trying jory is not um and it just, it keeps frustrating and, and stymieing Nia. And she's, she's getting so close to, to actually pulling her power to her skin. And, and Jory is like kicking and, and, and like playing with the wood of the, of the room. Um, so Dodge is like, go to bed, go to bed. I'm done. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to this in the morning. And <laughs> they're like, no. Um, but a dream visit from first dedicate of the fire temple, Skyfire. You guys remember Skyfire? You guys remember him? He's got red hair. <laughs> he was a he was a, a, a very powerful mage warrior guy in um, another country. I don't remember which one. Hajra. Thank he's you. From Hajra, Thank you. Which is where Briar's from. Which is the only reason I remember. Right. Briar's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, he's from that's my right. country. That's right. Okay. Um. Anyway, I was <laughs> the just... only good thing to come out of Hajra. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, a dream memory of, of uh, Skyfire helps Daja figure out how to get Jory to meditate because he taught her a, a sparring sort of meditation um, in order to, you know, clear the mind and, and just wait for what you're expecting to happen and be able to, like, sense and all that stuff. So anyway, she's like, okay, I've got it. We're doing this. Um, that said, before she can go to uh, help d d to do that, they hear a scream and Frostpine um, does not belong in this goddamn climate because they find him completely naked, sitting in a fire in the kitchen, and yeah. like the the maids are are fainting, largely because it's a <laughs> naked, a, a large naked man in the in the kitchen, um, yeah. <laughs> and Daja kind of eases him back into the world of the living, and uh, Aniusa is like, uh, who is the Cook. Cook, by the way. Uh, and you said, uh, is, um, she's just like, oh, you guys, come on. D d d d help, help the man. Get help and get his clothes back on. He's, he's gonna be cold. And it's like, she's taking a look. Um, oh, yeah, she is. She absolutely is. And she's loving it. Um, and Frostpine's fine with that. And Frostpine's like, who doesn't? <laughs> um, so anyway, they go to try the new kind of uh, spar meditation. I don't know what to call it. Um, it's active meditation. Active meditation. Thank you. Um, it, Nia is not a fan. She wants to be quiet and everything. And she doesn't like how uh, aggressive Jory is with her, her hits. And she kind of keeps whacking her, her knuckles too. and Because and, she's eager to learn to fight. And she's like, hell yeah. Jory, uh, Jory is just... Uh, Jory's a shit, man. I love her, but she's such a little shit. Anyway, she really is. so Dodge is like, I gotta adjust my lesson plans again. We'll, we'll figure out how to how to make this work. <laughs> End of chapter yeah. six. Chapter seven starts with the funniest paragraph I have ever read, and so I'm gonna read it to you guys. <laughs> um, the first line is at least amazing. 
If Tarad Voscajo was not the ugliest white man Daja had ever met, she had mercifully forgotten the uglier man's appearance. <laughs> oh my god. It's just like, mwah. He was six and a half feet tall as well. Um, every child in the neighborhood knew this man who looked like a monster would do anything from rescue kites to give coins for sweets. He's an amazing person. Mm-hmm. And Daja straight up is like, he's the u- ugliest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> <laughs> just... If she had ever seen an uglier white man, she forgot him. <laughs> that's so, that's just, uh, but yes, we point out that the man who runs the smithy is his Hephaestus. Yes. Um, and he's just good. And his wife is amazing as well. Um, and she's from Caption. We know this because she serves tea in a reasonable way. Whereas <laughs> everyone else in Namorn serves tea by putting sugar cubes in their mouth and drinking tea through it and it's in a, a glass instead of a, yes, a mug a glass yes it's like what daja is hates this so much as being a trader tea trader tea is a very specific thing <laughs> so you know yes uh so then ben fucking Latterdon sends daja a note um and we get a bunch of gushing about what a great hero he is from um, people who and- are in the uh yeah, yeah. Front in the smithy. And Tarad is like, I don't know. There's something a little weird about that man. Trust um, that man's instincts. Yeah, he's like, I mean, if a uh, fire had killed my whole family and we're like, wait, what? Apparently, the reason Ben is obsessed with fire and firefighting is because his wife and children died in a fire. What? Um, their house burned down and he was the only one who survived. Um, but Tarad is like, if a, if a fire killed my like whole world i would not be chasing it and yet and, and yet. yet um but then daja visits ben at his family's factory and she notes that the um whole warehouse has outside of it has burned down she's like huh that's, that's weird. so weird um and then when she goes inside she's like wow it's really cold in here and ben is like yeah my mom doesn't she gives us a coal allowance um, and so Dodge is like, oh my god, I can't believe this fucking woman. Can you believe this? So she then heats everything up by putting a little bit of heat in from the Earth's core into all of the metal. <laughs> Just enough to warm it, warm the air, not enough to burn anyone. <laughs> um, and so she measures Ben for his fire gloves, yeah. and it's just really fucking weird, and I hate it. The <sighs> entire scene is terrible. It, and It's so, it's, like intimate and and delicate and i don't like it yeah i don't like Um, it so then um she uh then um after they're done ben she's like can i see the warehouse fire and so they go and look at it and she goes wow this fire was set and he's like what how do you know that she's like yeah i mean because it looks like i mean air must have come through here and to really fan the flames she's like how do you know that and she's like you know as a smith mage i know it's what we do we use bellows wow i can't believe someone would do this and he's like sweating <laughs> and then um dodge is like okay i gotta go and he's like no wait wait for mother she'll just take you home in the in the sleigh and dodge is like uh, no i'm good and then maura Kane shows up and Ben's like, here, mother, we'll take, let's take Daja home. And Maura Kane, literally, she says, puts on, what is it, uh, the most terrifying excuse for a smile. <laughs> um, like, yes, I, I, yes, we can take her home. And Daja's like, no, I've been at the smithy all day. I'd rather walk. <laughs> so she does. And then Maura Kane is like, that's fine. I just wanted to, I wanted to go over the fucking I want to go over, uh, the, the, the <laughs> go over the accounts before we left. <laughs> You've been using too much coal. It's too warm in here. <laughs> um, and uh, we... Morricane is awful mm-hmm. and terrible and just an awful excuse for a human being. But uh, as Arjana says in the notes, I can't help but see how much Daja vilifies her further in her adoration of Ben. It's yes. gross. It's, it's disgusting. It's like, God, he just can't catch a break. I can't believe this woman is so terrible. And, how did, you know, everyone else sees how amazing he how is. How did such a good man come from such a horrible female is a specific uh, thing that she literally yes. fumes aloud. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. uh... Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Um, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> chapter eight. Um... Let's see, on her way home, Sir runs into Daja and uh, drives her towards the home. But, of course, 
it's been a couple of chapters. Let's have another fire. Um, so, oh no, wait, I'm sorry. I, I jumped ahead yeah. of myself. I just saw, a dry, there's another time that that happened. Fuck, damn it. Anyway. There are so many fires. It's like. So many fires, you guys. Um, so, no, this is what it is. Daja runs into Surge and they drive home, uh, where they find everybody's gathered in one room because they're all hiding from Cole's mother, who just found out that her granddaughters are going to be mages in, in, I mean, a carpentry mage? And, oh my god, how, who's going to want it? And you know that, that nobody wants a, a, a crafty, uh, person uh, moving into uh, uh, marrying their son because you know what, what if what if she could she could you know do things on her own and it's it's a it's a wild ride it, it, yeah um, so everyone's hiding from so her, anyway they're all they hiding from her because she's fucking disaster because apparently the matriarchs in, in this country are uh, <laughs> terrifying <laughs> which we well know when we get into will of the empress <laughs> ho kids <laughs> namorn is fucked up guys yeah. um daja tests Jory's resistance to fire uh, t- and talks to Mia in ways which I think I find her a beautiful blend of, of uh, Lark and Rosethorn. She's like, oh yeah, here, uh, l- let me, let me just burn you, Jory. And we'll see if that, if that helps. And, and, and she's talking to, um, uh, the way you put that is so funny. She's like, like here, I'm just going to burn you. Excuse me. Let me just, she's like, oh, it's warm. Do it to the other hand. Um, so, but then she's talking to to Nia, who's like, "I'm just a coward. That's that's the whole problem. I'm I am I am a scaredy cat, and I I can't even take just sparring." And and she's like, "Okay, first of all, you're not a coward. You you won't know your courage until you have to have it, have to use it." Um, and uh, and uh, secondly, clearly this kind of of meditation isn't for you. So we're gonna we're gonna do things differently. So um. Oh, also, she decides that she's going to, she's like, okay, I'm going to work with uh, Jory first, then I'll work with you tonight, and we'll just, we'll have separate, uh, less, okay, you know what, I'm sorry. I, I know this is, this is getting so fucking bloated, and I'm so sorry, but at the same time, I did It's still, this note- is still going to be faster than if we had written things out, Ariana, Ariana. <laughs> this book is a brick really is this would have been like a two-hour recording session if we had actually done it how we usually do this is still faster and yet shatter glass is even it's even longer ariana i know that thing man um there's a there's a whole part where it's like she she does a lot of of quoting from her her family in this um one that she does is is i don't remember if it's grandfather or an uncle but she says that somebody was like teaching them you know Okay, yeah, you can be a clever, uh, you can be smarter than the customer and give them exactly what they uh, what they need and and send them on their way and they'll never come back. Or you can listen to the customer, give them what they want, and uh, you know leave them to the things that they they need, and then they'll come back and they'll bring their children and they'll you know you you gotta. And so she's thinking, okay, I have to put myself into this. Um, and for some reason, I, I marked this and I just I like it. Um, it is Daja thinking about something her aunt said. <laughs> uh, children and Captain want the same things you do, her aunt uh, Hul- Hulweme uh, used to say. They can have them because they're only cocks. Our children don't get things cocks get. So now you decide. Are you a traitor or are you a cock? Because she's <laughs> cock. Because um, <clears throat> she's like, look, are you, are you going to uh, run from this you you kind of owe owe this to them and are are you a traitor are you going to uh you know clear your debt in in uh, od bookkeepers uh logs logs, or are you going to be a cack (laughs) (laughs) again just be a a fucking white person right right here like (laughs) so anyway um oh and not important but uh Anna Yusa and Frostpine either fuck or want to fuck because they're flirting in the kitchen and Dodge is like, oh, oh, good they for them. Fuck. Oh, Frostpine fucks. Oh, Frostpine <laughs> fucks. That's not the question. <laughs> oh, they fucking. Oh, oh, they fuck. Um, <laughs> but but Dodge is just like, good for him, good for him. Yeah. Um, 
the day goes as follows. Daja works with Jory, does work on the gloves, uh, makes improvements on her skating ability. Like she actually makes it so she can turn mid movement. She's very proud of herself. And I believe she was uh, practicing on her own, not even with the girls. It's true. She um, was. Because they were at their other lessons. Um, then she ends her day in meditation lessons with Nia, which I think is a great end to the day because it's all nice and quiet. Just chill. And, you chill um, out with the, with the chill twin. You know, just chill twin. <sighs> and then she goes back and her glove work crumbles. It is not the, 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 the solution that she, uh, of, of. Yeah. metals it, it did not work it did not hold it just completely fell apart it did not um go together yeah, well it didn't solidify in the way she expected it to and she's like ah oh, fuck i'm gonna have to actually use a metal a metal frame for the whole thing <laughs> like, dang it i can't just make it like it's a it's a leather uh, piece no fine um she was really hoping for that uh so she she demands frostpine tell her why he didn't warn her about overconfidence and he's just like well I thought you find out for herself for, or for yourself because <laughs> it's not his fault. It took her longer than her siblings to become overconfident. He's like, I didn't know it was going like, to be a lesson I had to teach like, you. This is something <laughs> people usually come across in their first year or so. You, you just were naturally good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just realistic about shit usually. <laughs> oh no, you had too much pride. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, it's a delight. So, yeah. She calls him the uh, worst man she's ever known. <laughs> yes. The lie. Yeah. Um, so, um, chapter nine, Ben thinks about killing his mother and then makes a device to set fires when he's not there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All while thinking of a pity party about how, like, um, oh, nobody listens to him. Nobody uh, heeds his, his uh, you know, wise ness whatever and he's just like they're all so fucking short-sighted and you know what yeah it's fine. i'll teach him so i'll teach them all it's the plan coming in f- into his mind as he is pitying himself and being like the world's biggest martyr it's it's it's, it's got some real incel vibes let's be real <laughs> oh the man is full of incel vibes um so um then daja notes that jory has been practicing her active meditation she can tell um <laughs> Morricane visits nia and gives her the, a lace pattern book daja seethes and tied the entire time and this is when we really see that Morricane has put her grief about her uh you know her her dead daughter-in-law <laughs> and uh dead grandchildren into she's just been pouring all of that into nia and jory yeah. and it's very obvious to daja that she really does love these girls and she adores them and she wants what's best for them. Uh, but she's then just she a broken, also gets really woman. fucking mad at her because she's like, well, no one's going to want, you know, a, a woman with rough hands from carpentry. And Nia's like, oh, I'll just wear gloves when I'm doing my lace work. Oh, like my mother wears gloves. She puts on, you know, she puts on lotion and then puts her gloves on and then her hands are so soft. And Morgan's like, oh, you're right. Your mother's hands are so delicate. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Namorn is a, is a cursed place. It is a cursed um, place. But, you know, Daja is like, okay, I guess she's a person. She's a human. And basically. But I still don't like her. Nia is like, I know. This is this is where she's like, I, I, yeah, I always thought it was lies because she's always so nice to us. Um, but then she's, she's basically like, basically I got to this point where I, I realize that she's horrible, but I pity her. And yeah. I, it's like, okay, yeah, pity doesn't have to come from a place of, of, good so yeah it's like i i pity, i pity your child isn't <laughs> <laughs> i mean a little bit a little bit yeah. but yes so um that's when daughter realizes that skating is like meditation to clear her mind so now she's just gonna sometimes she just goes out and starts skating now um Ben sets his device in a confectioner's shop. I'm just going up because this is where I was still writing mm-hmm. uh, while you were writing. So. <laughs> but Ben sets his device up in a confectioner's shop and tries to wait for his brigade to summon him, but they don't come. Um, the next morning they arrive with news that a beggar woman died um, and two firefighters went to the hospital from smoke inhalation. Uh, ben is so fucking pissed off at them for not coming to him. But then he's like, oh, this is perfect. And he goes and he visits the men in the hospital and one of them dies while he's there and he cries Holding his tears hand. of joy for that man dying and just like all of this elation of like oh my god i caused that i caused that man's death ha oh this is amazing this is the best feeling in the world he's like now they'll have to listen to me they'll have this will make them listen 
Yeah. Um, and then he goes to the island council. Um, I'm just going to say it's Alicut Island because it makes it, we talk about the, yeah. we talk about this too much. Um, the, the cookies he goes go, to the it's, it's too many, it's too many islands. There's too many fucking islands. But he goes to the council and he's like, hey, you saw what happened last night. Your brigade didn't do well enough. You need to give me more funds to do more training. And they're like, yeah, but your, your brigade didn't do enough. So why would we give you more funds? Um, so he gets angry. Yeah. In like a, you'll see, you'll all see. Yeah. <laughs> kind of way. It's like, I think he took that well. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're good. Um, so uh, then chapter 10, uh, it starts with Daja and Frostpine going to a mage party. Um, they, they, we actually get to meet uh, Haluda Salt, um, and she is an absolute delight. And like, I know how she's described, but basically, I kind of think of Alani. Um, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, that's I, the right. That's the right. That's the energy. No, um, it is the energy. But I kind of picture. Um, I can never remember the actress's name who voiced uh, Lin Beifong. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Anyway. Yes, I mean that's who I that's who I imagined her as in this uh this read through. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. Um so she's amazing. She's I'm I'm glad she's solving crimes there. Uh, although she's not. She's she's kind of over it. Um <laughs> Um let's see. Uh at the party, um they run into some of the of the mages that they know. Uh Corm Cormac is there. Is it Cormac? Comac. I don't remember. I forgot. Now. I don't. Woodman is there. Um, Woodman is there with he... his, t with the tutor, uh, Arnon, mm -hmm. which is Nia's tutor, because Cormac's, I'm just going to go with it. He's a busy guy. He's got a really big workshop. Um, and so Arnon takes over for her and he's with a bunch of punks uh, who are like, oh, this is a mage party. We're talking to mages. And Dodge is like, okay, fine. Here's my fucking medallion. And then they do it. And then they're all like, shut the fuck. They just shut up. And so she's like, so about Nia. And then... <laughs> So good. Such a badass bitch move. And he's just like, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's great. I love, I, you know, he's really, progress. He's really excited to be talking to this, like, this scrappy girl. He's like, you are amazing. Anyway, um, he also seems like a good boy. Um, he does. But he like also seems boy. like, he's a good boy kind of like Briar in that he does have, yes. he does have a, a, a streak of, of mischief. Um, on the way home, it's fire time, because why the fuck not? Um, this fire is huge, and it is taking place in a house where they are actually having a party involving many of the high-profile families in all of the islands, uh, all in one place, and suddenly... And a sleepover. Um, yeah, at a sleepover. children, because it's, it's a child's 10th birthday and, party, and, so... And many of, of the parents weren't there because of it, and so... Huh, <sighs> anyway, um, so... Daja and uh, Frostpine nut up and and they approach, you know, slightly disrobing because it's like, well, I got to save this stuff because this is my nice mage wear. Um, uh, uh, Sandry didn't uh, <laughs> didn't dispel this stuff against fire because she didn't expect me to be taking my best clothes into a fire. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they, they show up at Ben and he's like, oh, uh, you're here. OK, um. Yeah, okay, so he, he, he dispatches them. He sends um, uh, Frostpine around uh, the back way to uh, get some people. I think it's in the, it's, I don't remember I don't where. Remember. But uh, Daja goes in through the kitchen and up the stairs to where there are a bunch of, of, of young maids in the nursery yeah. with, is it five babies? Oh, it's okay. That's in the next chapter, sister. I'll get it. Oh. Oh, Okay. Chapter 10. Oh, this is just the one where she she gets all the people and she has them uh, hold nope. on. No? No, no. It's okay. Oh my Chapter god, there's too many you fires, are. you guys. There's so many fucking fires. No, this is the one with the children, but I talk about it in my chapter. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Your turn. I ended the chapter 10 with Daja and Frostbite going to the fire. Casual. I, you know, I did it just for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got frustrated by my jumping ahead and I... <laughs> it's okay. I meant so, to read it because I saw it and I loved it. Daja goes to the nursery. Um, also, she's like, obviously, Ben is here. Ben is here. But Daja's like, oh, yeah, he's here. It's fine because he's here to fight the fire. Bitch. Okay. <laughs> she goes in. She saves the children in the nursery and holds the fire 
with Frostpine's help uh, and gets all of the children out and the maids out before the entire place collapses. However, all the children survived except for the baby Daja was carrying on her back. Um, fuck you, Tammy, so much. Just... <sighs> when Daja finally wakes up after recovering from the fire, Haluda Salt, you know, we just talked about you her. Know, Haluda. Um, is there. She shows up and I was like, hey, so about that fire, um, it was real suspicious and uh, it's like, lots of coincidences. And Daja's like, what do you mean? And she's like, well... The fire took place in the house of the mistress of the head of the island's council that denied Ben the funds for training more firefighters, which is incredibly convoluted to explain. But it is. But but it, yeah, she it's did like, the oh, yeah. work, so she just has to exposit it to us. So it's like, oh, yeah, well. which is fine. <laughs> um, and so they're like, so uh, Haluda's like, yeah, that's it's really suspicious. And Dodge just like, wow, I can't believe that happened. What a coincidence. Um, and then just then. Frostpine and Haluda are called off because of a, there's a big break in the case and they're going to get the guy who's doing it. The forgeries. Yep. Yeah. Because of, of course, <laughs> our, our, what, what act are we in? Okay. T- t- time to, to have the instructor pulled away. Um, oh, then Dasha oh, goes skating to, no, yeah. to, to clear her mind again. Uh, but I was going to say, uh, we, we've been watching a lot of, of things about Bojack. Um, and so the, the quote that kept coming to mind this entire book is you know when you look at something someone with rose-colored glasses sometimes the red flags just look like flags and that is a thousand percent what's happening here because there are so many red flags so many we haven't even gotten to the most brightly burning flags yeah yeah anyway so like like Reese said she went skating um (laughs) to clear her mind (laughs) um so Daja takes Jory's training to the next step and has her closing her eyes. But she's, you know, increasing and, and Jory's, of course, initially frustrated and like, Ugh, I'm never gonna be able to do this. And then like almost instantly is able to deflect one. And it's yeah. like, yeah, you can. So stop being a little whiny bitch and, and do the work. Daja says in- But this in, is too hard. In, <laughs> right? It's like, stop being a little brat. No, <laughs> you're, you're not, you don't get to do this. Put the work in. Anyway, um, so Daja goes to the site of the fire and considers what it would be like to kill the person who did it, like Sandry killed her murderers, because she has been saying, like, luckily, because this is the third book, Daja has already heard about um, uh, Sandry and Briar having students. (laughs) Yeah. And she's heard about what happened with with Sandry and, and the... That whole thing. Um, you know, the dragon she's salt. Just, and, she's so mad. You know. Whoever did this, oh, I, he deserves to burn. She's, she's very, she says this a lot. Like, this person deserves to burn. Um, and, and then I guess, you know, Frostpine gets back. <laughs> I know, right? He just, he just comes back, back and he's like, like done. <sighs> we did it. We got some cleaning up to do, but we got the head honcho shit dude. Um, but, that's, that's, oh, such a relief. Oh, it, but now, <laughs> unfortunately for Ben, that means Haluda has nothing else on her plate. So the fires are sure looking suspicious. Oh, and you know what? We totally forgot to mention. Back when uh, oh, Daja yeah. was talking to Ben about um, the, noticing how suspicious it was, she was like, should, should I tell the magistrate? Um, and he was like, oh, no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll tell him. And then when she talked to Haluda at the party, she had no idea what she was talking about. Yeah. <sighs> And Dodge's she's like, still well, ignoring exactly these red what... flags. Yeah. <laughs> um, Poor Babby. So anyway, Haluda's, Haluda's now on another case because she is a workaholic. Um, ben fucking Ladridan shows up to try on the gloves and he's super suspicious, but Dodge is once again oblivious because, he, oh my God, he you can see his brain going, I'm going to be able to set fires with this and not get hurt. And it's just like, fuck, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. And that's, and I think that's when she's like, God, and I can't believe the man who, you know, the person who set these fires is evil, obviously evil. And he's like, I mean, or people just haven't been listening to him and he is just tired and no one, maybe he's self right, maybe he's righteous, maybe this is, and she just is like, she's wow, like, maybe. He is yeah. so compassionate. He's it's such like, a compassionate man. Girl, girl. He is, like, course, clearly unwell, just like too. him. Because, like, it's very clear that, like, I'm imagining him with, like, dark circles yes, under he's his like, eyes. He's, yeah. He's dishevelled. She mentions that he's, like, clammy and he's, like, 
twitchy. Or that might be a little later. Yeah, yeah. but... Ugh. Um, but yeah. So, uh, next chapter, Daja delivers Ben his gloves. Um, and so we didn't mention this before, but the last time she went to his house, she saw in his office this, like, all these shelves of all of these things taken from fires, right? One of which is a skeleton hand with a wedding ring on it that's, like, melted. And she's like, ooh, that's eerie. And when she talks to him about it, he's like, oh, I've taken these all from mementos from fires where, um, you know, I, I learned a lot or, you know, I, I did a good job or something like that. Or, yeah, where I now learned she, something. Yeah, where I learned a lesson. Um, no, literally at first, the first thing he says is, you know, these are ones where I saved people. So then when she comes to deliver the gloves again and he's like runs off like a giddy schoolboy to go put his hands in fire, um, <laughs> she notices that the collection of fire mementos has grown and that um oof now she notices that a necklace that there was a maid who was helping her take all the children out and the maid ended up dying after getting out dying in the courtyard from smoke inhalation um and she had been wearing a pendant um around her neck of one of the gods in the area and she now sees that pendant up on the up on the shelf and she thinks to herself wait didn't he say this was when he, like, he took things when it was a good fire, but he didn't save people. Oh, maybe it was that it was fire where he learned something. That's that must have been it. And it's like, oh my God, the mental gymnastics, girl. Jesus, like, okay, I know you're, you're, you're a babby, but uh, see, cr- criminals of, of the, um, of the serial kind, uh, like to keep souvenirs yeah 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 um then uh yeah Uh, later after she leaves (laughs) meanwhile back on the ranch she's yeah she's working on like the suit now she's like the gloves are done that's awesome and um so ben comes a couple times so she can measure him for the suit and all that you know then um One time, he like at the very last bit, he tells her, "Oh, you're not going to see me for a while. I have to go for a trip. I'm, I'm, you know, I always have to do this trip right before winter every year. So I have to go. I'll be gone for two weeks at least, right? Um, And then Daddy Frostpine comes in. (laughs) Perfect timing, just as she's measuring the man's thigh. Sorry. Um, And uh, he does his scoping out of people in Dodge's life, which good as he should, because apparently she is so naive and has terrible judgment of character. Um, which we find out also in Will of the Empress. Um <laughs> She's so trusting. She's so trusting. She's been and so she has... hurt. She and she's so trusting still. It's like she is. my baby. Uh, I love Dodge so much, yeah. but ma'am, ma'am, please. You are so wise and so dumb. But yeah, Ben leaves super unsettled, as he should. Because it's like, Frostpine smells it on you. <laughs> he smells the gross. Yeah, he does. <sighs> um, Literally everyone else is like, Dasha, <laughs> girl. Ben, <laughs> before leaving on his trip, leaves fucking boom dust in a bathhouse furnace to go off when the fire gets stoked. He wears his new gloves because he's a fucking freak, as Risa said. Um, he is. He is. He doesn't need to do it. He has no reason to wear the gloves other than being like, hee hee hee, I have gloves now. <laughs> this is the part of my supervillain persona. And it's just like, <laughs> you know, you seemed like a perfectly capable human being at the beginning of this. I don't know what snapped, but goddamn, dude. Um, he was like, wait, if I kill people, I have power over something. Well, time to just become a crazed killer. Yay. Um, then they'll listen to me. They'll all listen to me. And they'll all listen. But it'll be too late. (laughs) They're dead. Wait. Um, Daja and Frostpine, uh, run to the bathhouse fire because, of course, they do. Um. They're not in time to do anything about it. Yeah. Because it just fucking exploded. Because he uses- There is no bathhouse to save. But yeah, it's like, maybe, maybe using a ton of, of, uh, boom (laughs) dust- Was a bit overkill. Was a bit overkill. I mean, we've, we- we're all very familiar with boom dust by now. We know uh, <laughs> how easily it can uh, blow shit up. So anyway, um, later, uh, Haluda comes up with something from the bathhouse fire because it had Daja's magic on it. She's like, yeah, I mean, we can't really trace anyone from fires unless it's powerful magic. And um, 
then we can. Because that's the other thing is all of these fires that he's started, he has literally worn outer clothes and then he f- puts them in fires on his way away from the scene of the crime oh, so yeah. that they can't trace him. So he's been so careful before now, but now this time he's just so fucked up right now that he can't help himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 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 a really it's a it's not that he had like far to go, but it is a crushing descent. Like yeah. it just it's a, <laughs> it is a snap. Um so, uh, so anyway, Daja touches uh, the bar that has the magic, and um, yeah, it was it was the bar to the furnace, and she uh, is able like... to do some um, uh, of what we've seen uh, Nico and Tris do, which is uh, reading the uh, history or the past of, of of a room, but she does it through um, metal. Oh my gosh, that's just like Sookie in 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 True Blood. She does it through nature. Anyway, um, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I know what you're talking about but, completely. So she sees through the, the the incident, through the metal bar, and she sees Ben fucking Ladridan setting the fire and wearing her gloves. And then she gets to watch as the iron bar... Uh, Herself. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that, that came. As the, she, as the iron bar, goes through a man's body. Honestly, that that yeah. <laughs> who that is just so upsetting. Um, so they all conclude that Bennett fucking Ladridan did it, um, did all the fires, and but they have to keep quiet because he left. He's gonna be gone for two whole weeks. Like they're just gonna have to sit and wait. And yeah. However, <laughs> Ben's carefully laid plan for an alibi goes awry when they end up making great time and he arrives home to a letter from Haluda Salt waiting for him at the gates of the city. Then he goes back to his house and finds the same uh, letter on his desk with a note from his mother that's like, why does this woman want you? And then he notices as he's like, God damn it, Haluda Salt knows. She knows. I don't know what to do. She's going she's gonna to get me. And then he goes around and he looks and he notices that something has moved on his memento shelf. And so now he's on high alert. He now fucking knows. Salt the suspicious. Salt the clever. Salt the best. Well, as usual, he was ready for whatever the gods threw at him. Really? Are you, buddy? Are you so, ever? So um, he, uh, he goes out and he sees, Mom, why are you back so soon? How could, how even you could bungle so easy a thing as a simple escort trip? Shut up, he said, cutting his mother off for perhaps the first time in her life. How dare you interrupt me? Maura Kane's mouth was flat with rage. Her eyes poisonous. Ben shrugged. I know, Mother. I'm surprised myself. Now that I've done it, though, it doesn't seem that difficult. It's never too late to learn, so they say. <sighs> um, so Oof. then Daja uh, is alone in the house, and Nia comes back, and she's like, I was going to go visit Aunt Maura Kane, but she's not answering. I don't know what to do. Something's wrong. Um, and so they run over to Ladridan House, um, and... They get in through um, the shutters and they go in and they find Maura Kane's dead body. And what has been done to her is apparently so grotesque that Nia, does she throw up or faint? She might do a little of both because um, they then have the to. The house is on fire. Yeah, the house is on fire. Um, so they then have to get out because. N- Nia is also a wood mage. So the whole house being wood and going up in flames is also hurting her. Um, so, uh, they get the fire brigades, um, and then, I don't think we'll find her alive. Um, there's been oil, it was all completely, um, yeah. She would beat no more servants, torment no more sons. Nia fainted, there we go, yeah. Um, so Nia gets her out, um, and then, Daja heard a rumble in the ground, it grew like an oncoming tidal wave so the entire house fucking by the way this is where we stopped being able to take notes so i'm just going through the book as i go yeah um and then um they go back to the bank in our house um and that's when nia wakes up and is like i was terrified um and then she goes wait daja jory's in trouble and that's when daja realizes like oh shit because Jory's in trouble, and Dodger realizes that it's because 
uh, she uses her, her mirror that she made for scrying, and she sees that uh, Olaneka's uh, hot cracker soup kitchen, everything is in smoke and in flames, and she sees hot cracker holding the flames with Jory helping. And so Dodge is like, get Frostpine, we have to go. Um, and so they go off as fast as they could, uh, and they get to the fire, her concern was Ben. He was playing hero with no one to know that he was the creator of their misery. Um, but they run off. <laughs> they get to the fire at the hospital. Um, and of course, Oleneka is just like, she's holding it as much as she can. And she is a fucking... She like, is a boss. She can. And um, as they get there... Um, Jory goes, I'm safe here. Rabbit Latterjohn is still evacuating the nursery. We need every hand to get the little one safe. Which, of course, Dodge is like, fuck. And someone goes, no, Rabbit Latterjohn's dead. They said the roof ca just caved in on the nursery. So this man has now faked his own death to try and get out of the situation because he knows he's been caught. Um, but he does it in such a way to, like, still frame himself as the hero. Mm -hmm. So Dodge is like, shit. <laughs> She plunged into the kitchen thinking somehow it got there. Uh, ben likes to mix oil and fires. Hey, Ariana, now it's your turn to get... Woof. Um, <clears throat> this is an intense chapter. Yeah, okay, so... <sighs> but thankfully, so, um, they can talk. She and Potcracker can talk. Yeah, everything. yeah. Luckily, uh, she's, she's able to have that same, you know, just touch the skin... Yeah, We're good. Well, they both are fire, you know, they're yeah, connected with fire. Helps. Um, so they they just very quickly they, they get everyone out of there. It's it's a very painstaking process. Um but <sighs> I'm sorry, I love this. Oh, and I could pick up her thoughts. Oh, so you learned you can't beat everything, she thought. Her inner voices rise, her speaking voice. So you found out you're human. How sad. Listen to me, girl. <laughs> as soon as they don't need this exit anymore, I'm leaving. I've decided it's pronounced Olenica. Olenica, yeah. Olenica. I like it. Dodge is struggling to, f to save everyone. Um, and they end up, this is, oh, this is where they end up having everyone uh, hold hands yeah. and uh, onto each other's so clothing. Um, to specifically, that's because she, Olenica, Olenica is like, hey, if you're not afraid, there's one place that no one else is going to get anyone. And it's the, it's, you know, it's the mentally ill ward. Right. Well, that's right. Like, I forgot want... that's the fucking yes. ward. Jesus. Yes. Right. No one else has gone for the mentally ill people at all. So Dodge is like, fine, I will do what I have to do. She gets in there and she's like trying to get them all out. And none of them are listening except for this one man who we find out later about him. But as far as we can tell right now, he's schizophrenic, but he's, you know, in a, in a place where he's not in a he's in not a currently afflicted he i mean yeah, you know what i mean like he obviously is having some stuff going on because of whatever the stress him. also um and stress and he's like well i can't go out there they're gonna know they're gonna know that i don't they're gonna catch me she's like fine here and she puts like a, a lab coat on him now they're gonna think you're a doctor y you'll be fine um and so she gets him to help her and literally they go around and like tie sheets to all of the um all the patients, patients around their waists and stuff to try and get as many out as possible. Um, and so they do. Some of them just won't go with her. And she's like, I guess I'm just going to have to leave them and it's going to haunt me forever. But I can't get everyone out. That's and that that's, bit stays with me so vividly. Yeah. Her madman. So much of this book madman. just stays with you. Oh, um, yeah. So without continuing to get bogged down, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Too late. Right. After after you know dealing with all of that, um, she she knows that she has to go after uh, Ben. She's like, I have I have to do this now. An account has come due. Yes, and I was gonna say <laughs> that's that's the an account has come due. Just, I'm sorry, the m amount of traitor in this book is so beautifully done because it's. I'm sorry, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to that. Um, so but he's just like, oh, of course you found me. You know, um, y you would know. Um, I wouldn't expect, expect any less from you, basically. <laughs> um, and she, she says, you aren't leaving, Ben. You have accounts to settle. Time to pay what you owe. Money-grubbing traitor talk, he retorted scornfully. You're above that. I, I am a- And now we see yeah. where his mother is racist. Yeah. Everyone's racist against traitor. I am a traitor and proud of it, she reminded him. We know that some accounts are written in blood and can only be paid in that. You have blood debts to settle. 
He's just, and he's still, he's still in that. I owe no one anything. I, I did them a favor. I tried to teach them, but they, they didn't even bother to listen to me. Um, oh, so right. Her. he starts trying to get away on ice skates and she literally just heats up his skates so that he sinks mm -hmm. and he goes sprawling. The gloves fused, shackling Ben's arms from one fingertip to elbow. He fell again and rolled onto his side to stare at her as she approached. The wig was falling off. Oh yeah, he'd cut his red curls short to make it fit better. Daja, please, he said. He'd gone dead white, the shadows cast by the great fire rippling over his pale skin. You can't do this. You're my friend. There was nothing she could say to that. Instead, she looked toward the hospital. They weren't that far from the soup kitchen dock. People were still there. She took out her mirror and fed it through, fed it enough heat to make it shine brightly. Raising it, she flashed at the crowd. Do you know what happens if I'm accused of deliberately setting fires? He asked as if, she, as if he thought she might still believe in his innocence. Do you? They'll burn me alive. Whatever. Um, Daja looked at Ben. I know they will, she told him. And I will be there to pay off my account to you. Shit. Yep. Um, yep. So they waste no time at all. It is a very quick... Uh, trial it, it's it, everything's pretty cut and clear and they are eager to get rid of this firebug so he is sentenced to um to burn burn at the stake and so she's watching him in her righteous in uh fury watching as the flames begin uh clawing at his robes and and she despite everything she feels she starts crying she can't like like stop no seeing one, yeah the slow death of dying by fire <clears throat> and then we're gonna read my favorite part of the entire book okay. Okay. she couldn't do this she couldn't she didn't care about the law daja j jammed her power deep into the ground past bedrock into the white hot flow of molten grok and metal below she summoned a single overpowering burst of heat and threw it all into the fire let the namornees punish her she thought she couldn't watch him slowly burn to death then she saw it the silver fire of directed magic roared out, out of Frostpine and Elenica. It rushed in a silver thread from Jory. Logs, platforms, man, and stake turned into an immense roaring column of flame that shot 30 feet into the air. For a moment, it was so hot, Dasha's face felt tight. She smelled burned hair close by. The column lasted only a breath of time. Then it vanished, out of fuel, over the spot where, where Kugisko had, had decreed Ben would die. Yeah. And no, don't nobody fucking give her shit about it. It's kind of yeah. like, I mean, I I sure as shit wouldn't. If, if we just got rid of a fire starter that didn't have magic, I'm not going to anger the fire goddess standing there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, everything gets cleaned up. Uh, they, they stay there. Um, it's not like their cursed sentence wasn't carried out, says Elenic. <laughs> yeah. No, Frostpine, sorry. Oh, yeah, right. Um, yeah. But yes. But yeah, no, nobody, basically... Um, they say their goodbyes. It's that's really all there yeah. is to F it. They're there for five fucking months. Yeah, because the the roads are impassable because they're in the fucking north, and and so finally everything melts enough, and um, then they're like, "Fuck it, peace out, y'all. We're going home." And basically, it's it's just another one of those. This child is now going to carry the, the uh, many deaths that she felt uh, responsible for or just just that she witnessed and so yeah. and it's basically she's just like she and her her little uh, i hate calling him little but he he piles himself in in quilts uh when he's in the sled yeah. and <laughs> she's just like let's go home come on old man on, let's old get out of here because she because <laughs> she marks yeah because he pops his head out of the furs and stuff to look around but yeah <sighs> And that's the end of that chapter. So, uh, that's, uh, Jesus that's Cold Fire. Christ. That's such an amazing fucking book. It is. It's an amazing book. And I love it. Mm -hmm. And, um, do we want to do talking about our favorite things? Uh, yeah, we can do it quickly. Cause I feel like we talked a lot about it. Um, yeah. So favorite part? My favorite part has always been and will always be everyone setting fire to burning burning yeah. them up it's yeah it's the the part that really stuck with me so many parts of this book stuck stuck with me yeah but that part yeah. more than anything i just love daja enlisting the help of you know daja's madman um that's what they call him in, in will of the empress at first um <laughs> so i love him as a character yeah. and um i'm glad he comes back in a later book um and i just love 
Daja being able to be like, okay, here, wear this. Now you're a doctor. They won't know that you're not supposed to be here. He's like, right, of course. She approaches him with kindness and, and, yes. and, and treats him like an adult and a human yeah, being. Yeah, exactly. She just, she's just like, hey, now you're listening to me and I need your help. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, she, yeah. she's creative and understanding. And this is why she is honestly the best fucking character. Um, yeah, she is. I love Daja. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say my least favorite part of the book is when a baby dies. Yeah. Because fuck you, Tammy. I'm going to be completely honest. I forgot until she starts talking about how she's holding it. And I went, oh my God, 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 oh my God. Um, yeah. I wish I could forget that bit. The part the, yeah. the part with Maura Kane's death really stuck with me because my, oh, yeah. it, my brain, it goes the whole uh, Alfred Hitchcock route of, you know, my my brain makes it. Yeah. Like, you remember in, in uh, uh, Maleka Frey when uh, Lou is found dead? Yes. 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 That. Yes. Yeah. Just a little more pop culture stuff that you guys probably have never heard of. <laughs> um, you know, that's just what this podcast is. That's what we um, are. Okay. So, before we talk about what we're going to be reading for next time, mm -hmm. um, Smash or Pass. Okay. Halloween Assault. Smash. Smash. Uh, smash or pass, um, uh, C Comac, Cormac. C oh, yeah, Cormac. You know, I feel like probably in his younger days, um... Smash? But... I'm gonna say pass. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say pass at this point in time. Uh, Elenica Potcracker. P probably smash. Smash. Oh, I have to assume. Um, yeah. Um, are there any other adults in this? I mean, <laughs> I'm I not mean, gonna... obviously Matazi. Oh, yes. Like... Matazi and Cole. yeah. Smash Matazi. You know what? Smash Actually, both. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Why ben not? and Ladridan. Pass. pass. On pass. into the afterlife. Thank you. Very much. Yeah. Yes. Hard pass. Hard. And you know what? Tarad, lovely man, but pass. And you know what? That's okay. Because He's got a lovely wife. Exactly. He has a lovely wife. Who, and they, we didn't even talk about, I, I love how they are so good to the, the people who work there. Yes, she makes sure everyone gets food. She's like, Everyone's no, no, well fed. do you want seconds? Because yeah. now is the time to get them. <laughs> I'm not having you be all weak and, 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 and passing out because you didn't eat enough. Yeah. <sighs> She's good. I, there are so many food pushers in this book. Yeah, it's just true. like, oh, I feel at home. <laughs> yeah. So what are we reading next time? I'm not going to say next month because who knows when it's next going to be. It's a, it's another really intense book. Yeah. So uh, next we'll see. time we will be reading, I'm, I'm making sure I say it right, Shatterglass, uh, the Shatterglass. fourth of the Circle Opens Quartet, which takes place uh, along um, the travels of uh, Niklar and Goldeye and uh, Trisana Chandler. Yes. So, content warnings for Shatterglass. Um, <laughs> obviously murder. Um, There's that, yeah. But it's specifically... Um, dehumanization. Gender-based... Uh, yeah, I'm going to say gender-based violence. Um, dehumanization of an entire... Uh, the, the Slavery. It's basically slavery. It, it is a caste um, system, so uh, everything that that implies. Um, and um, just specifically uh, murders of sex workers. Yeah. Um, is, like, that's the big thing. Uh, and a, uh, child is orphaned. <laughs> so, it's a really intense book. It is beautifully written. Hey, but guys... it's also very frustrating. Because Triss is very frustrating sometimes. She is. Um... At least, it's really, it's really hard for me sometimes to read Triss. Because I am very much like Triss yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Especially young Risa <laughs> is very much like Triss. Um, I feel like that's, that's like part a of combination of Tris and, and Sandra, <laughs> and you were like Briar and Daja. Um, uh, but yes, that's next time. Read it. You guys have the couple of months. Why not? Yeah, we'll let <laughs> we'll you know back, when we finish. Touch it. base. <laughs> if you guys are interested in knowing when we're going to record and stuff, so are we. Join our Discord. <laughs> it, it is in uh, the the link is in the description. Mm -hmm. And as always, if you want to support us. Don't give us your money. Instead, go support Tamara Pierce on her Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Tamara Pierce, where she raises money so that she can um, take care of the feral cat colony that she looks after. And she can also um, 
you know, actually have money so she can continue writing books. Because, you know, they make you have money in order to live in this country. It's fucking Ugh. insane. I know, right? So, yeah. That's uh, that's that. As a reminder, I'm Risa. I'm Ariana. And uh, we're the Tortal Sisters. And as always, we're hoping you keep on reading. <laughs>